It's 10 o'clock. We'll call our Boundary County Library Board of Trustee meeting to order. Uh, we'll start with the roll call. District 1, Ken. It's not here. District 2, uh, Wendy. Here. District 3, here. Present. District 4, Bob. Present. And District 5, Lee. Here. Okay, so we have a quorum. Uh, do you have any comments? Well, I just had a question from last meeting. The the guns, is that for concealed or open carry? Oh, you're the one that handled it. Is that for concealed guns only that you're putting a policy in place? Or is it for open carry too? It's for all of it. Anything defined as a weapon. Okay. Did, did the lawyer say open carry is okay legally because i thought it was interesting i went to subway and the guy has a gun like the guy that works there and i thought that was interesting and someone said it's because they can't legally tell them and i was just wondering has a you got your ear, i was just wondering if the lawyer was able to confirm that that regulating open carry was legal Regulating an open carry. Oh, are you Mr. Wilson? I am. Oh, nice to meet you nice. finally. And you are? Adrian oh, Norris. Adrian, nice to meet you. Uh, you can regulate in a private residence as you come in or in areas that were directed that for the safety that you can. Open carry, uh, being a constitutional state. Yes, sir. Open carry is authorized and, in fact, it always was authorized. What restricted it was uh, cities would come out and make it more constrictive and say you couldn't open carry, you couldn't conceal carry in town without a, a permit. The legislature in 2017, I believe, came out and nullified that and said no cities could make it more restrictive right. than what they have and therefore it made us a constitutional state, made us open to carry. But does not preclude somebody from looking over and saying you can't carry in here because we don't want it. Now, but a public facility, a, um, I, I'm confused about that. Because I know like courthouses, schools, I know those have been regulated. All in the same category as regulated areas that prohibit it from, from happening. So as we're standing now for the safety of all and looking at the risk factors, especially since we have young kids and people who are uh, weaker in form as they come in, uh, we're looking at all weapons coming in. Right. And, and like I said, it's a choice if you want to come in or not. Is yeah, I think that you might need to relook at that because since it's I a definitely will, and I have. Yeah. To Wait one second. A this is an employee policy, by the way. This is not for. Right? Oh no, 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 I understand. I'm just concerned for. I'm very constitutional, and I'm just concerned that um, you might be overstepping on the on the open carry, not the concealed. I understand the concealed. I understand, but you can write up an employee does not have to work there. Okay, well, so we'll, we'll leave it at that, like, but... It's like having an employment contract. Yeah. You're contracting to work for somebody. You go in there on those terms. They don't have to work there. They don't have to hire you. They can do it as is. You go on, on the terms and conditions that they set. If they feel as a public agency they're open to more risk than not, they can put that down as an employee. Okay, just as a final statement, I just want to let you know, I don't know, I've talked to a few people, and I don't know if legally... You know, I know how law is. Lawyers can bicker and disagree and so we forth. <laughs> so I'm not here to get in a debate. I'm just saying that I question it, and there may be a potential um, challenge in the future. So which would, which would be fine. And like I said, the person, the reason I look at it under the terms of employment. Okay, no problem. Thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, let the record show that Ken is here. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so we can start with their. Approval of the minutes from April 18th. Any amendments to the minutes from anyone? The only thing that I <clears throat> was wondering is uh, under the action item for the emergency protocol, yes. we, we had uh, we made a motion to uh, approve a motion to form that committee. Right. But should we also list the Participants that we chose for that committee. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I did not I put all that on there. Okay. So I uh, recommended that we do. <coughs> Can we on that committee? Uh, any other uh, 
amendments to the minutes from anyone? Okay, so take a motion to approve the minutes uh, with uh, those changes as we noted. I make a motion to accept the, the uh, Boundary County Library Board Trustee minute meeting, uh, minute, meeting minutes for April 18th, 2024 with the amended uh, action item where we, Ken and Lee were added to the committee. Okay. And have a second? My second one. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears> hey, <throat> okay, let's see. The new business. You're looking at the other one. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the old one. Yeah, let's get some old business. Yeah, 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 I'm not. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, so follow, follow up on the building bureau information. Okay. Um, I did call the gentleman that's the in charge of that project and I um, shared with him the, what you guys shared with me as far as what about the permits, what about a safety plan. And the permits especially, he went, huh, I hadn't thought about that, I'll have to get back to you. And that was kind of the end of the conversation and I haven't heard from him since. So I'm not quite sure where that's at. I did get a hold of um, Randy Miguel at Bonner's Ferry Builders and talked to him about it. That soft corner, that you were talking about is actually the one on the other side of the building and it's not soft, it's where the drainage is. Okay. And since Craig had Bonner's Ferry Builders come and reshape that so that the water runs away from the building, that's no longer a problem. Okay. The corner where the mural would be going into, Randy said it's solid, there's no okay. problem with it. He did, however, he came and looked at the um, metal siding that's on there, which is where they want to paint that mural. And he said it's, it's been there for quite some time. It would probably it would probably work, except he said I would recommend you do a wash, like maybe with a power wash with vinegar. He said it's kind of chalky right, at this right. point, but but it's it's in good shape. It would just need to be kind of. Is it thorough. aluminum siding? Is that what it, is? it looks like it's tin, you know, for the siding. You know, it's not. I don't think it's aluminum, but it, I think it's more of your your tin metal. But uh, you need to prep it. For any of the paints, anyway. So, you know, not that, only do you need to clean it, but then you got to prep it. So, and I don't know how what they use is that they're prepping it. It's just more of a. That would depend on the paint they're using. Right? That's it depends on the painter in a way, but then that's where, from you get into the SDS sheets, you know, and stuff like that. Right. What is the compound that they're right. using? If it's regular soap and water, they just need to say it's soap and water. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, just so that they list it. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's basically where that sits right now. We, you know, it's not going anywhere until he gets back to me and lets me know they have a plan. We need to probably need to find out also that if we do need to have the permit from the city for them to sit there and do that. But I would imagine if you're having some entity coming into working on a building that the city would require a permit but maybe it's maybe it's county property maybe it's the county because you have the side that they're painted on is the park on the is the department of lands is the park and then you, you know we have but yeah, that. we remember that conversation yep. or, yeah yeah so really for now it it feels like it's up to them to come up with a solid plan and get back to us okay okay Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would touch bases with them that we don't want to lose, you know, we want to make sure that we're not saying no. I'm happy to do a follow-up call yeah. since it's been about a month since I talked yeah, to them it, and I haven't heard anything. Yeah, because so. it's like I don't want to all of a sudden, it's like they're going to choose something else in a way. But if, they're they not, if they're not motivated to call us back, then I don't yeah. want to chase them, yeah. honestly. Well, I'll just call them and say, you know, we had another meeting and we were curious about whether or not this is still in the works. Well, you can tell them that you had the so-and-so inspector come out to look at the building, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, going on to our quote from CNK Roofers for the roof repair. Yeah. Um, so I talked to, again, I talked to Randy, the guy had come and looked at it. I think I mentioned to you guys that we were thinking maybe just along that 
one side of the roof needed replaced, but the roofing guy came and looked at it. The parking lot, the yeah. yeah. Where the, yeah. But he said, no, the whole thing would have to be done and ripped off and redone. The, the thing that we did last time, which I thought was sandy, mm -hmm. um, wasn't a total redo. It was kind of a, um, a yes. A and yeah, yeah. that in itself is cracking along the seams. Yeah. So, um, can they tell how solid, is it wood trusses? Mm -hmm. Can they tell how solid the trusses are without ripping off the roof? If you beat that one, I mean. Um, most likely, but I think you'd have to go in from inside the building, up underneath the ceiling, yeah. which there's room to walk around up there, and, or crawl around up there if you wanted to check that out. Has anybody looked at those? From the inside of the building? Yeah, or didn't they access that somehow? Uh, to, to, to look at the trusses earlier or not? Not to my knowledge. Oh, they okay. accessed that to look at where it was leaking. The last time it was leaking along the stairs, they poked their heads up there and looked and went, yeah, here's where it's leaking. But then the, the, the soft run. part of it was when Denny went up on the roof to repair that and he walked through that and he came down and said, all along that side is soft. Oh, yeah. so that's as much oh, as I know about oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Then early on when that one repair was done, there, they went up there and kind of looked at it and then found a soft spot, so there's a little soft spot that was repaired, um, and then it was one that we coated. Oh, so that was back in Yeah, that, that was, yeah, there was okay. one little area that it was identified, which is good, you know, we're having that, that uh, inspection, so. so we're, are we like, um, red zone dangerous, no. yellow zone? No, we're not. Yeah. We still have time. The quote for redoing the roof was 70000 which mm -hmm. doesn't include tax and it doesn't include um, whatever the landfill might charge us for dumping stuff. Um, Randy said that that means it'll be a good roof, it'll last you another 20 to 30 years if we do it that way. Um, I talked to Ken about it. Interestingly enough, I've had several patrons since I talked to you mention that exact same thing. Yep. Like, why don't you just go up? That's what, where do you and I? So the biggest thing that I had heard was the fire department of the city doesn't have a ladder truck to get to a third story in downtown Bonners Ferry. And so therefore fire code wouldn't allow us an occupied third story on the building. Okay. Now the city planner <laughs> told me that is no longer the city planner. So. Yeah, I don't think that's an option to start with. Uh, a third story. <clears throat> Yeah. Under our capital assets replacement, according to the law, uh, okay, I'm going to kind of read it here. The Library Board of Trustees of the Library District may establish a capital assets replacement and repair fund within the library district budget for which district monies may be budgeted and carried, carried over from year to year. Disbursements from the fund <clears throat> may be made as the board may determine to maintain, repair, or replace the capital assets of the district to remodel or repair an existing building, to furnish and equip an existing building, and to purchase or replace major appliances and vehicles necessary to maintain and operate the services of the district. Monies from the capital assets replacement repair, repair fund may not be used for purchase of land or to build new library facilities or to build additions to the current library facilities. So we would have to ask the taxpayers for a bond to do that? Yeah. So what's That's kind of interesting because the uh, terminology may have to be a lawyer here. <laughs> we could probably <laughs> because use it talks to about replace remodel, the roof, yeah. but not to yeah. raise the so remodel. What can we remodel? remodel, 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 remodel. What is the term? Right? Right? So, so we add a remodel and addition. The remodel you're doing third story existing space. Which if we just raise the roof, we're going to existing space. But we're adding the addition. We're adding the square feet. That's the way I was looking at. If we're okay, adding so the square feet, that would be an addition. But we could probably use our capital assets for the roof on the addition. Yeah, correct. And then but we, would have, <laughs> but we would have to go to the taxpayers for additional funds for the addition itself. So maybe what we should do is get a, get a price for the addition. And then, because we're going to have to put a roof on it one way or the other. Right. So if we could separate out the addition price versus the roof price, then we can we can say... You know, for X amount of dollars, we can get a third floor and we would put in an uh, elevator for uh, 
handicapped access and all that kind of stuff. And it would be just literally the cost of building the third floor. So we'd have to put a bond wouldn't, for that. Wouldn't the elevator or the lift be included in, that's an addition, right? Well, uh, that could be a remodel. That thing would be more of a remodel because you have to get access. It, it's sort of moot. We don't have the money in our capital assets yeah. fund to pay for that all anyway. Right. So we are going to go half that, no. put our hands up. The other, the other consideration was the foundation under that building would it support would it the support extra, a second floor yeah. or a third floor? You know, the extra few hundred thousand pounds of a yeah. of another story on that building. This is where this is where we need to have the actual meeting with the builder to basically throw those concepts out for him to sit there and I mean uh, and it probably make recommendations. As much as I love engineers. So initially just to have to sit down with them and say, here's what Yeah, we this is why we have this plan. We like to sit there and do you know, like here's a perfect example is like for the roof, like you're sitting there getting at, it's like we can sit there and do the, the structure of the roof to where we're doing more of the open beams and more beam support on the inside to basically support that down the line. Um, but yet sit there and pay for it and reduce our insurance because if we go with that, that spruce laminated wood, it reduces the, the fire, um, element so um that's one way of doing it but at the same time it's like before we go that route is we need to get with either a structural or a recommendation from um, a structural that's either has the familiarity with builders to give an input of where yeah you can sit there and do that but you need to sit there and put more um, um, Pier supports, you know, on the corners of the buildings, you know, which is like, okay, well, we can add that into the to the new uh, fund, so to speak, the, the bond fund or the improvement aspect of it. So then it's like, you kind of plan what you're sitting there doing for that, because then you're, because then you're going to be adding on more load on top of that. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, yeah we do need just a little more information. To that. Yeah. I think that that'd be, especially coming from <clears throat> their standpoint, their, because it may be just as simple as, yeah, just do some more um, peer posts on the, you know, four corners, and then um, I'm pretty sure that we wanted to stay away from elevators and go with just more of the lift that's just, just restricted for ADA access up and down. You get in the elevators, you're talking about $2,500 per month fee, so because of union inspection, stuff like that, so. Whatever we need to do, you know, that makes the most sense. <clears throat> so, is the roof in the shape where we need to do something like within the next uh, year? We don't have to do it this hot season, we can put it out until next hot season and we'd still be okay. And like Randy said, what if you, if you don't do it this season, all you're looking at is, you know, the possibility of more leaks, which we handle that. Yeah, they just, just so, do a quick repair of the leaks right now and go. Well, this last time it leaked was the first time we actually had to have it repaired. And it, always before that, when it was leaking, it was just a matter of the drains weren't working properly. Right. So. This one was seeing it was coming to the roof. Well, it was coming through the roof in the spot where they had removed the old AC unit. Yeah. So okay. it was a spot that was already... Punctured. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and that was back when they did the... Did. Well, that's when they did the fat lab remodel. Mm -hmm. So that's... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So either way, Randy said this particular contractor is available to get this job done for us this summer. Or if we want to talk about a bigger project and postpone it until next summer, that'll work too. Basically, either way, we're okay. But it, it is going to need done. Yeah, so if we're going to do a big project, we need to get traction on that now. Right. Or make our decision on just doing the roof. Right. right. We can, I mean, we can pay for it out of our cap bowl. The roof yeah. right now? The yeah. It is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fix it. Yeah. 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 So. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So. Okay, so we'll Where this sits is you want me to talk to Randy and kind of give them an idea of 
what different what? things we're trying to look for, or you want me to arrange a meeting with Randy and you guys? Yeah, which one? Which one? The set up a meeting. You know, whether it's just you and me, and that'd be fine. Okay. All right. I just want to get some, you know, idea of what. Okay. What uh, what how they view it. So. I guess just ask the question, you know, what's the feasibility of, a, yeah. of an expansion? The likelihood of that passing. Yeah, yeah. That's probably <coughs> it. E. Okay. Uh, review and adopt the personnel policy changes as discussed during our last meeting. Everyone's got a copy of the changes we made and the uh, So go ahead and take that lead. So uh, if you look at the first outline page uh, under prohibited contact, it says all employees or volunteers in the library will not carry a weapon as defined, which is kind of an awkward sentence. So wouldn't it be better to say all employees or volunteers will not carry a weapon in the library as defined by code? And originally we had that as in the library during their work time, but we talked about it and decided that it'd probably be clearer just to say in the library in general, because then you fall. The idea is that we avoid, we avoid uh, being sued for an employee or volunteer firing or using a weapon in the library and not having success. And so then you get into the argument about whether or not they were on or our volunteers oh, that were on, or, so yeah. so that became a point of contention, and so it was just thought better to just say if they're in the library, they shouldn't have a weapon. So um, I would just change that to the other side of the sentence, so it reads a little better, but basically says the same thing. Does you have to sense? put in the library at the end to make it do what you want. Right. Yeah. yeah. All employees or volunteers will not carry weapons as defined by the code 18-3302 section 2B through 2E in the library. Okay. I will do it that way. Because otherwise, you, if you put it, will not carry a weapon in the library as defined by the code, then you're... That's awkward. Yeah, you're also awkward there, so... So, there we go. Um, and then... Basically, all the green highlighting starting on the next page, which is page 16, would be accepted. And um, that's, that's stuff we agreed to last time, at the last meeting. Uh, I left allegations of dishonesty, immorality, and criminal misconduct highlighted because that's actually out of uh, ICREMP's personnel policy, just straight out of their verbiage, and I have to talk to Tim about it, and he's good with that as, as language, because this is all post-decisional. Uh, so this is the main clearing hearing. So all of these things have already been cited. And then um, everything else would be as it is. So all the, and, and basically it goes down to the schedule, if you look at the Family and Medical Leave Act on page 30. We had a group of employees that came under the Schedule B that had a different, uh, you know, part-time employees could build up days and all that kind of stuff. We just did away with that and added at the end, extended medical leave will be considered by the director and or the board on a case-by-case -case basis. So the volunteers would not be earning anything for medical leave, but if they needed it, then they would talk to Lynn or whoever the director is at that point, and it would be you know, that it would be discussed. And then if they had a problem with how it turned out, they could come to us and discuss it. You mean the part-timers, not the part Yep, sorry, yeah, part-timers. Part and that is clear, they're part-time, so. Right, and that's a pretty yeah. straight up, you know, clearly defined, what is it, 32 hours for full-time versus? Actually, for our purposes, it's once you hit more than 20 plus hours a week, Okay. You tip over into the Percy, so that's when all of those benefits start. All right. Yeah. And so, except for the one little in the library change that's going to make it breathe smoother, I would I would uh, submit this as our personnel policy, and and I guess we could vote on it and see if we accept it, and then 
I would get it to land with the correction. And you have the employees sign that as a condition of employment, right? So they are agreeing to this voluntarily <coughs> in order to gain employment with the library. Okay. And to the policy thing that's signed, right? The hand the way. I give them that whole packet. Okay. They read through it all. They sign Sorry. it. The page that they sign goes there into their employee file. So by the same token, these changes, all of us can get it and sign it again. So yeah. Well, that's I have the full-on copy, but just the highlighted if you want see those parts. Of that's, that's beautifully. That shows a lot of dedication. Right there. <laughs> I would like you to keep it. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you have questions, we should look at it. On the new policy, do you want to have a date where it has a new date on it? We will. It'll, it'll say today's yeah. date. Approved. Yeah. It'll say approved. Yeah. Well, assuming we approve it here in just a minute, it will say approved this date. Okay, any further discussion by anyone on the proposed changes on the personnel policy? I'd like to make a motion to accept these changes to the personnel policy. I'll second the motion. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor of the proposed changes as highlighted in our handouts, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. <clears throat> okay, under new business, formally assigned Director Lynn as the key executive for the purpose of the BCL deposit box at the Wells Fargo Bank. Let's give us the background on that, Lynn. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize we had a safety deposit at Wells Fargo Bank until I got the bill for it. And then there was a piece of paper I was looking for that I couldn't find anywhere, and I thought, well, maybe it's in the deposit box. So I called Wells Fargo. Um, we've had it there for like a very long time. The only signature on it is Bev Doherty. Wow. Which was the director <laughs> before Sam. Wow. wow. <laughs> How long has she been gone? <laughs> Monique didn't even know. She said, I'm, I'm assuming, and she's trying to be really, it was wonderful the way she said it. Said, I'm assuming that's not, She's not available anymore. <laughs> She's not available anymore. Um, and then I did talk to Sandy about it, and Sandy said no. She she thought she was on it, but she's not. Um, which tells you how often we've had to get into it. Yeah. Um, so Monique did some digging, got back to me, and she said this is the first step. If you guys formally say, and I take the minutes to the bank and say, okay, they said I'm in charge. I, I do have the keys. I found the keys. Thank goodness. So. Basically, all we have to do is that, and then I can get into it, and then the next step would be to shut it down. I don't think so. So we don't even know what's in it, because you have I know. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, we don't know. Yeah. yeah. So. so then if we do need a safety deposit box, you, we'd probably transfer over to our current bank. Where everything yeah. else is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and at that point, it, because I did talk to, to our bank about that too, and at that point we could make it so that there's, you know, just a matter of forward thinking, more than one person on it, and yeah. passing it off right. to the next person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those little details that's gotten missed over the years and needs to be rectified, basically. All right, okay. I'd like to make a motion to assign Director Lynn Silva as key executive for the purposes of the safe deposit box at Wells Fargo Bank. So I'll second the motion. Okay. <clears throat> Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion by anyone? Okay, hearing none. <clears throat> uh, we'll uh, vote on formally assigning the director Lynn <clears throat> still as a key executive for the purposes of BCL. Deposit box at Wells Fargo Bank. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, our next agenda item discussion of HB 710 and possible changes required by GCF. 
you want to okay. give us uh, yeah. <laughs> This is a lot of fun around the state. Right? Yeah. Nobody really knows what they're talking about. Right? So, um, understand that when it comes to law and laws being issued out, if it's a new law or new entries like we're talking about the uh, library protection area, until <clears throat> somebody has been sued and the courts interpret how what they're actually talking about. Right. We're not sure. Now, I have sat in on parts of Nampa cities and Boise cities meetings when they're going through them. And it seems like people are trying to run to the U.S. Supreme Court and get definitions and put it to our definitions to come up with where they're going to go from there. That's, uh, that's a lot for us to be doing right now and trying to interpret it. So I've broken it down to, first of all, let's take a look at the law. If you don't have a good copy of 710, but I'm sure you all do it in your own <clears throat> And ours is actually 18-1517B. It's now been adopted and is under the books to become effective on 1 July. And all the legal uh, research areas that we as lawyers use if we're not reading books uh, has already updated to that and telling people about it. And that's the library uh, section which actually incorporates what you're looking at as the Library Protection Act. Let me just go back to my the Children's School Library Protection Act. And if you're looking for it, it's not 18-1517. Also make sure you put the B section on it so it, they slipped it in the middle of all that. And what's unique right off the bat? What's really unique about it is it's in Title 18. That's all criminal statute. Okay, so is it it's a violation criminal. Well, it doesn't say it's criminal, but it put it in there like that. And so you have to wonder, and we were just having a discussion before the meeting started just a little bit, uh, is if it's criminal, then is there going somebody going to be charged with the criminal sanction? Because how do you charge an entity with the criminal sanction? Where do you go? Uh, if it's a civil and they're coming after it, are we talking about damage to a person? If it's damage to a person, then it would come under torts. Well, the, now the law has already changed right before it got signed because it went from 30 days for you to take corrective action to go to 60 days. But if you come into the Tort Claims Act, that's 180 days to make your notice that you have a complaint about it, where you're going to go. So there are some areas to look at and see. I think some of the big libraries down south with, with uh, their Block and maybe chopping it a bit to be mm -hmm. but I prefer that we stay out of that. And let's let's talk about how we can all be happy. Okay, <laughs> so I met with Andrew Kerr, the prosecuting attorney. We've met twice on this matter. Lee and I have talked about it. The director and I have talked about it. And let's start with what's the first thing we're doing now uh, to bring out that we're talking harmful to minors and exposure to minors is that walking through the library and they just have to look over right and left and that's exposure and then but then let's narrow it down okay the elements of, of a claim are you have to have material that's out there you know it's out there and you made it available what's making it available then who can complain well, the only people that can make the claim against you are the child the parent or legal guardian Okay, so those, those have, it's not somebody just running in off the street and say, you know, the place is on fire and everybody runs out. Uh, <clears throat> pictures, any minor who obtains material as a parents and guardians, again it goes to the three, any minor parent or guardian who prevail in an action. It doesn't say in the law, it says if you claim it, uh, let me get back over here. If you claim it, you've got time to get it off. You don't, they have a cause of action. But it implies that there's, a, there's an investigation that takes place. Well, I've got some great ideas to talk over with the staff on some issues on how to report and give a guideline if the board's gonna take an investigation and whether they see it viable or not. But I'm not prepared to say that that's what you should, you should do. And I talked to the prosecutor, so what are you looking at right now? In my opinion, the place you start when there's a new law that could hold us accountable or give rights to the people coming in is post the law. And it should be a big area with signs in, in, in 
H4 that says this is the new Idaho law. So everybody's getting at least initial education to what it is and let people know that we know it's a law and we take it serious and we're going to take that action and that's where we're working. Now we went over how the library is divided and where different books are and it's taken <clears> care of and it seems that there's a there's a good working relationship there now. Plus, the library over the last couple of years has had to put into to effect how they evaluate what people think are nasty, uh, uh, what would be violations of this law, and we're doing that. Um, we should have a form. The law creates what it wants to see in the form, a letter to be available to send for the library to look to make its evaluation. I've looked at few other places have come up with an idea that I'd like to talk to you I'd like to add to that letter which is to put a guide on the back of the letter they can tear off that says this is how your rights go and this is how you follow them this is the next step and if you don't think it was there so people are feeling like their their complaints are being heard and the board is sympathetic to their cause and then what the result <clears throat> in the final and if there's an appeal process before they go also that helps us if there's to be any sort of litigation because one of the things that happens if people are doing some sort of claim under a law if you have an administrative process to be followed then you can put that off until you say you haven't finished the administrative process we ought to evaluate it plus it gives the library the opportunity to put together any claims it has that it's not what you're claiming it is and so you're putting it together in case they do end up in court I, it doesn't say what court's going to hear it, right? Now, jurisdictional courts and magistrates up to $10,000, or if it's a probate, it can be deal with real property. Every, everything about that goes up to district court. I guarantee you that if, if it's going to any of the courts at this point. Now, and of course, you don't know who's going to be coming in and if it's even going to be a matter to us. Because since this library was proactive in the last couple of years to get a new policy, I believe so far it's working pretty good and I haven't heard any complaints about people saying you guys aren't, you're not doing your job. So that's what we want to start. So Anna Kay and I are believe going to we start with signage and get it out there. Let's see how everybody takes to it and where this law is going to lead us. But until we have some case law that comes out, no, we don't know what to now what the defenses are going to be. Now, there are affirmative defenses, and that's important because it's making it sound like it's a civil matter. Affirmative defenses are where we, that uh, if somebody lied to you, they said they're over the age, they use some false ID, uh, some types of ID that can't be used, or driver, uh, a false driver's license, draft card, birth certificate. I think if we our, poly, our staff should be advised that if somebody's trying to give ID to get a bad book, uh, they, it should be a picture ID, which is basically what you're trying to do, so they're not walking somebody else's in. The other affirmative defense is if somebody comes up and says, I'm this minor's child uh, legal guardian or parent, and I'm giving them permission. And if you take that, then it's a fervent defense that you were trying to do your job to control it and it got out. Now, but then you have the question of, let's say um, a parent is in the library, the kids grab one off of the shelf, they go over to sit in the chair where their other siblings are, and they're showing it to you how many people you're going to have to fight if you did something wrong there. Those are things that need to be discussed and where we're going to go because Right now it's kind of open ended. We have a start where we're going to go with that. I think we need for the letter they can make a claim. I've got some additions, Lee, that I'd like to go over with you on. So no real action for the board right now. We have another month to look at it and then come up with the document. The key is that everybody understands that both the library staff, the board, and the people and the people that are coming into the library understand where they are and what their rights are when they come in. Now, a couple of libraries down south have said, we're only going to entertain those rights for people that have library cards. I don't see that in the statute. I see this thing. But do we limit people who can come into our library by library cards? No. Right, and so how would do, their, the argument's gonna be, wait a minute, how can we protect them, the rest of them that come in as a public library? So I think you're going to see probably some 
challenges down south. Mm -hmm. It well, sets in the public library for viewing, you know, but, and, but you have to have the card or the application to check out. And, right, and then it also gives a defense to the library if you have the signs up that say, and we, and we label the areas where people are, and you have the signage up that says, here's the law, then you would also have an, another defense that you could bring up to say, you saw the signs, why are you letting your kids back there in the first place? So it brings a little bit of personal responsibility back there, but it gives us another line of protection. Does that make sense? Yep. Would a, <clears throat> would a minor be allowed in the library without their parent? I don't see why a minor can't, as long as the sec they know the sections they can and can't go, and I think that's part of the signing that we <coughs> put up. It's an area where it require an adult to say whether you could look at it or not, and you just put, all, you put a warning sign up. It must be you have an adult, just like the old, well, it's the old gas station, you see from the Playboy's penthouse, it's not like that stuff. <coughs> and, and I'm sorry, but we, you know, it's one of those where right now it's an unknown world we're getting into it. I'm just giving advice to try and protect us in every way we can so you guys aren't. So I'm not running over to court and saying, why is the board here? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. I'm under arrest. So I guess my question is, um, Upstairs in the nonfiction section, um, we would have a sign that says, no unescorted minor in this area due to house bill for the law. Right. Right? And we would we would have a sign that says that in the nonfiction section. Fiction too. The entire and, building right. is closed. But to me the nonfiction section is is more uh, because the people that have talked to me about this issue have said, you know, I want my minor child to be safe to go up to the library in the adult section and go through this area. Because that's what parents are looking for. And that's what users of the library are looking for. They're looking for access. They're looking for their children to have access to the library. Don't forget Christian fiction. Right. So what... But what we're saying is, because this law, the way it's written, says that anything that can be deemed as harmful is a violation of the law, we're going to have to put that sign all over the upstairs of the library. Mm -hmm. Then are we going to require library staff to enforce that? And if, if, we, if we don't, are we in... Are we following that? Well, did you put the sign up so that helps? That's correct. You've got a sign up there. And I'll bring up a couple other scenarios to you as well, but let's take a look at this one. Is if you see a minor walking back in there, uh, I believe by this you would have authority to walk up and say that I need some ID that you're old enough to be here. Uh, what if you don't see them walk in there and they're standing back there and you don't know? Are you gonna be held accountable? It says, no, you're voluntarily taking and making it available. Well, you were not. We're putting the signs up saying you're not supposed to be back here. And you're saying if you're not 18 or have the, the parent with you, you're not supposed to be back here. Standard thing, you're just protecting yourself. What if they say, I have a note from my parent that says I can be back here? Now, the law says you're supposed to be personally escorted or have your parent there. If, if the parent, if the parent is, if or can a parent be escorting their child uh, on one floor and the child's at the other floor? I think in that situation, you should have the parent check in, get the name of the child, and say, "We're in here, and I've given them permission to where they where they can go. They have authorized." But can the parent bring the child into the adult stacks with them to? to Look at the old set. I believe that the, the law is saying if they're escorted by the uh, as accompanied at the time of the act by his parent or a legal guardian. So they have to be with him. So the parent, my, my <coughs> so the parent couldn't just sign a waiver for their no. kid? No. As it stands now, yeah. courts come out and change it, which yeah. I'm yeah. guaranteeing this is going to be interesting. Right, this seems very loosey goosey. It's yeah. going to be, and that's why the court's going to have to interpret, and that's what 
and they go right back to the statute. They look at the arguments that were held in the legislature, and they try to put the intent of the legislature. But as it stands now, you're you're kind of. Okay. But I'm hoping, and the prosecutor is in agreement. We start where we're going, and and she believes that that's the appropriate start for us. Okay. Questions? Because it's going to be lots. Of Yes, I mean, so this is, I don't know if you saw my consideration sheet that I wrote up for it. Uh, in it, I said the enforcement mechanism is a $250 reward for individuals who bring a successful lawsuit against an offending institution as well as civil damages. No criminal, criminal penalties are attached to offenders beyond what is already in Idaho law. Right. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. And keep in mind, people say $250, but do you hit the other part plus additional civil damage? Plus damage. So they said, well, my, my son's having to go to counseling for the next six months to get over with. Um, but it is, but it does give us a little narrowing down with the three type, types of people that can find a minor parent and a legal guardian. And then our reconsideration policy seems to, to hit the button. We need to add the text of the Children's School and Library Protection Act to that. Well, I, I intend to bring it, and, and that's what I was showing. But I also here. like, you You talked about the administrative process tear-off, right. so we could add that to it also, like just give them a bullet list of the steps, check boxes. It shows the intent that we're trying to follow the law if there's a claim that we're not, yep. and it allows us to modify something and keep everybody informed as we go forward. Um, um, didn't you also say only patrons can do reconsideration? So does that part have to be changed? Um, in our policy, I think, didn't we add that only patrons can do the reconsideration? I, I, I don't know, but I, I would imagine it says that. I think we, I we, I think we yeah, it was, a, it was a discussion, I remember. Anybody comes in a patron? No, you have to be a... To, You've got to get a card, yeah. You've got to get a card. And if you don't have a card, I don't think we need to involve you in our reconsideration policy. But you just said that anyone that walks in the door. Well, that's uh, what I'm looking for. Because right. that's what, and then that was the talk. Right. They're looking down there, and that, which popped up to me when my study and their policies go on. And going, if it's only people that have a, have a, <coughs> a library card, but anybody can be in there. Um, so anybody should be able. It's more than when you're doing the patron, you're more of doing checking out. The checking out, of, right? But in being a public library, you're, you know, you're kind of open to viewing from the general public. It's more. Of, who do you? Who do we have the library open for? Open Public. Then this is a public law for free library. So yeah, and then my final one, okay, patrons with minors in their library account will need to sign an additional release of liability, as well as review the appropriate policy changes before their children can check out books after July 1st. Is that accurate? You know, I kind of put that in there that, because we have people with kids on their account, and you were talking about reaching out to each and every one of them. Why, why don't we, have, I mean, we got to do it, everybody, we're putting the signage up. Is there anything that would prohibit us from just putting a letter together with the law and sending it out to everybody who has to fight as a patron? But, I mean, there are people that currently have kids on their accounts. Right. But the law has now just changed, and so you know, should we have them, do we, do we need to have them acknowledge that the law has changed and that, this now means something different to have a kid on your account. Because a kid on your account can only check out kids' books. No, nope, right? that's not true. They can't no. even check out books. If you put your child on your account, you are in essentially saying that I give permission for my child to check out anything in this library. But, and that's how we've always done it. Yeah, but now your child does not have permission to check out any adult book. Right. Under this under the law, law. Right. Yeah. they no longer have that permission to check it out by themselves. No, I don't there. think that's. I don't read the law that way. So I see, think what the, the law question. says is much more vague. What it's saying is, if your child is allowed to take out a book that they find harmful, that's a breaking of the law. So they're not saying they're not saying every child has 
can't check out a book from the adult section. They're saying every child can't be hurt by a book. So it's not. But if a child comes to the counter with a book from the adult section, then they have broken our policy by going into the adult section to get that book. Unless, Unless they're, they're accompanied by their parent or guardian. Right, but the child but is. Are we carrying it farther than and saying? Assuming the parent or guardian. I know where you're going. Yeah. Right? Then the parent and guardian should be there when they check out. Exactly, <laughs> but exactly right. It says to be with them when, it, when they're there. Right. So I think if they're taking anything from the adult sex, then they're going to have to have the parent there signing out. Unless it's some sort of unrestricted adult book section, which is, you know, the most difficult classifying job that we could possibly that handle. It's not, yeah. I mean, that's not doable. Yeah. It's also, that's completely it's also easier to start uh, with a tighter regulation and loosen it as things go on than trying to retighten it as after the fact. And we're loose now. We weren't until this law came out. Right. But we're loose now. And I think that what we've got to do is if it says the parent has to be with you, and I believe we've yep. quoted it a couple times, then it should be for the checking out. Well, that may need to be the. the so that's the biggest job that, 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 that I see. What's that? So you get the public informed on top of that. Right. So, so. I mean, we have to let everybody with tilt code on their account know that this is now changed, that you're taking yes. off. I agree. Right. right. So the, the and thing if, I, they, I, if they complain, call their legislature. Well, that, yeah, and that's why you know maybe we have to have them sign a, an a additional form that says I understand and agree that this is now a policy. So I don't the, know. If, I don't so know. I'm, I don't think the you live here. I don't, well, know, just, I don't know if you can go that way because yeah. it's a public law. They're responsible for knowing the law. Well, you can't sign a letter that lets your kids go by beer, and you can't sign a letter that. But I, I guess the thing I would like to say is from the Idaho Commission for the Library, they say, and their little blurb about this is, first remember that libraries and school districts have lost cases where they have removed or restricted materials violating the First Amendment rights of minors and adults. So there's a lot more case law saying that we are being too restrictive than there is that we are being not restrictive. And that's why I said, I said, that you can interpret it one way, but we need the law, we need the courts to look at this law. And we don't want to be in the front of it, but unless you guys are really willing to pay a whole bunch of money to go to court, let's let the big big dogs down there and fight this out because we're following the law. You're at hand on and cover that case. <laughs> <laughs> I have been looking to retire. <laughs> Give me one case. And what, what, what big case? What, what, what big case? Case? So, so. I've been saying since day one, the publishers need to start putting ratings on the books. Well, and, and but that would be a different a different thing for the legislature. But it would it would relieve some stress from you guys. It does. It puts the library in a tough spot, and that's why I'm saying. We have to start strict because we don't want them bringing everybody into court saying, I'm well, going to make an example out of you guys. Or somebody just overly zealous. And that's why I said, when it comes to patrons on who can check out, you don't. You can have people just come in and say, you hurt my child. We don't want to be in that position. <clears throat> that's that other bill that they're looking at trying to do. You know, so it's like, yeah, I didn't understand that. So that's my broad brush right now. I'm going to talk to Lee about later on about then we'll get back to the board with what we recommend adding to the letter but uh well we'll look at the we'll look at the reconsideration policy yeah and i do want to uh, do that now and at the same time uh what we put out should be clearly put forward on your policy page okay we have a you know reconsideration but i think there should be a section saying if you have a complaint or a book or something these are what you want to read so that we can get, we're, we're showing everybody, we want you to know the law so none of us are gonna get in trouble for it. This, I mean, I'm trying to put together a press release right. so that we can get ahead of our next meeting so that people can be aware of what But I also want you to know that, that the prosecutor and, and I are on the same page for this. So, uh, because the biggest step is information. Yeah. Just get it out. This would be the one of the yeah, things I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and get this up over at Gary's. You know, on the on the right post it on the, post it on the, I'll on get the library on the on the library bulletin board or upstairs or 
I put it. I will put one on each floor for the books, just so you're covering right. that people know the law when they go there, because they may not. If they see the kids run upstairs, they don't know what's going on. Uh, so we want it out. We want people to know. So I'm going to be on the end of the stack space now. Yeah. The front desk. Put it on the front door. Put it on the front door. Too. Yeah, put it on the front door. Long. You can put it on the counter. And, and if and somebody else. goes over and they have an objection, your clerk's up front can just look over and say, there's the law. You can read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not a lawyer. I can't tell you what it is. Right. But it's there. We put it out. Right. Here's his address. But the good news is, is that like they're still battling in a lot of the libraries, the bigger ones, the ones that are allowing a lot of these books. And I think you guys have done some huge improvements over the last, you know, six months. So I don't really foresee a lot of problems. It's just extra Could measures listen taken. To their, the big law firms down there advising the big cities down there, they're preparing for it. Yeah. And I think, it, and I was looking at the Southern Idaho, you know, Boise now, mm -hmm. the couple, and they're just, yeah, they're looking forward to this. And that's my input, and I'll have more as we go along. Good, but you got to ask me back. Can I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> For clarification's sake, so essentially what you're saying is that we are no longer allowed to check out to anybody under the age of 18, that a release or a waiver from a parent would not really stand up, or are we saying we are only allowed to check out kids' books to kids who have their approval on there? So essentially you're talking about making the librarians police. Yeah. So well, in, not really. So in the position of saying, I'm sorry, I can't check, we're talking yeah. about... We're talking about Christian fiction. We're talking about adult nonfiction. If, if a, a person that you don't believe is 18 and brings a book up from the adult section and you have a question, you have a right to ask for their ID to verify it if there's not an accompanying parent or legal guardian. That's your affirmative defense. That's what protects you. Just like in the store if you're buying alcohol. Yeah. Unless when I was growing up. But that was a whole different thing. <laughs> but the alcohol is out in the broad open. And I don't see the stores stressing they, out over it. They don't, except for, because, but they'll have inspectors. And let's get some, something clear. If the state puts a law like this together, they're going to task somebody to come around and inspect. Maybe not right away, but yeah. they will task it, just like alcohol. And you, each librarian, whether they're willing to take the risk yes. of checking out. So I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have a question. Uh, I don't know if you can answer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. if somebody yeah. files a suit to, yeah. or to decides that the Boundary County Library has has done this harm, <coughs> who do they file that suit against? Will it be against the personal individual librarian? Will it be this doesn't say. I believe they'll sue the library, go against the library, but. Remember, it's only three types of people that can do it, and you have 60 days to go through the, that administrative process so they can get there. So it, it does put some speed bumps up there to keep them and make it restrictive to do it. Uh, and the question is, like I said, do they go to the police and claim the police to come over and cite the library? That's criminal. Or do they go to and file their own case in magistrate court? We don't know. Or do they have a tort claims act? To put don't in? don't they have to claim harm and then give it sixty days to move the book and then file? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, see, yeah. see, no. That's if there is a harmful book in a un, in a non restricted section. But I, you you. You don't have to do any of the reconsideration stuff if it's in it. If it's in the adult section, it's an adult book. We all agree that it's an adult book, and we will close that to minors. Yeah. Boy, this is by closing the adult section, right. we take on the liability. So basically, of we're talking not, about the, of not checking out a single adult book out of that section that's closed right. to any minor whatsoever. That's, I mean, that's the, that's the line there. I think you guys are stressing 
I'm happy. And if Adrian's happy, you guys are doing great. <laughs> Lynn was a Lynn was one of the best people you hired or well you have promoted. She's done wonderful. Adrian is one of ten thousand people in Boundary County and there are a whole bunch of different ways that people could make this a problem for us. And so we have to completely cover ourselves right. Right. for every possibility for everyone. At least at least tell the courts that we're right. 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 Yeah. 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 That's, that's what I'm getting at yeah. with more. And, and so, so this we find you have to sit there and do our due diligence. Exactly. And do and take that you know yeah, because what are judges gonna do? They're gonna say, well they and it's it's the Supremes that are gonna give the or the appellate are gonna give the, the interpretation. The local judges are gonna say, Okay, well it looks to me that they tried. They did everything they, according to the law, they thought they had to do. We don't have the legislature giving us any opinion, and so it's going to open the door for them to say, okay, let's let it go. It sounds to me like they're both trying to follow the law. I mean, the, so the classification system currently is adult, young adult, and children, right? Those are the only three classifications that you have when a book comes in. We have a recent adult. Which but, but coming in question. like with the recommendations, they have sort of a mm -hmm. classification yeah, already, right? Yeah. Are those the three classifications? Basically, yeah. But young, young, adult, <coughs> young adult is in the adult section, though, right? No, it's down. The young adult is downstairs. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> it's it's down there by the C and C or the. Oh, we just moved some of the uh, young adult so downstairs. That's what. I'm you saying. know, the reconsideration is only for young adult and children classified yeah. books. Yes. Anything that comes into our library classified as adult, you now have to be 18 in order to check out. Right. You can check it out for your child. Your child cannot check out an adult right. book by themselves without you standing there. So every advantage. Which, by the way, think about this. And, and the important part of them having to stand there and check it out for them if they want is if that's our policy, then it prevents somebody from taking a book home, giving it to their child, and taking it back in and say, you know, you, you can show me where I was here to sign it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to come in and I, I know everybody's an honest person. In fact, there are a few people that make up stories. And so, <laughs> Which is why you're still employed. That's right. Oh, well, trust me, there's a lot of lawyer work coming out. <laughs> And you have booklooks.org. Three is questionable. There's some threes I've left alone, but four and five probably should be moved to the adult. So when you're ordering, just check booklooks.org. It, it's, they've done a good job. They really have. I think the threes are questionable, but the fours and the fives are definite. Well, we have another month and a half. Yeah. Well, all right. Okay. That's okay. good. That gives me a lot of good stuff for our press release thing here. I'll get that out. Pretty quick. I, I'll try and run this by you. This press release thing before we send it. Okay. <coughs> the director's report. Uh, we had 3,500 patron visits last month in April. Uh, 59 new patrons. 275 computer uses. Um, our catalog has <coughs> slowed down a little bit because we have Diana's out. And she, does, she and I are the cataloging team. So um, we, we, she did some before she left, and we put those out. And then this month is probably going to be a lot less. So that's why that particular aspect is slowed down a little bit. Which is OK, because that's given me a chance to kind of get a handle on some other piles I have to deal with. Um, had good turnout for people attending programs. The last, um, this would be, yeah, in May. Um, really started picking up traffic wise. Had some quiet days when the weather was nice, and then and then several over 400 people in and out days, which is great. Keeps it's going to be busy. a busy weekend this weekend, I bet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, there's a, a few gaps, but that's that's really for as far as materials, that's why, because that particular aspect of it is slowed down right now. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? Kelly and I went to the budget training in Coeur d'Alene a couple weeks ago now it's been, and that went on. That's a 
kick. I like I like doing that. It's enjoyable. Those those state guys really know their stuff, and it's fascinating to listen to them talk about it. And this is the second year in a row I've gone, and both times it's been like. I am so glad that I'm doing this now and not five years ago because they've really streamlined it and made it much easier in terms of, like I go back and look at Sandy's records and wow, what a math nightmare. So yeah. it, it's a lot a lot easier to deal with now. So that's, that's an advantage for me, which I'm grateful for. On your statistics, I had, was gonna ask you a question. How much of an improvement has there, has there been um, Since the beginning of the year, so to speak. Improvement in terms of traffic? Yeah. That, that's honestly, just the. Honestly, Ken, not going by the numbers, because I'd have to sit down and look at all the numbers and compare them to you before, but just going by my experience on the floor, which I'm not out there as much as I used to be. Right, we're just right. having a drive. But um, we're still not up to what we were okay. before. Yeah. And I think there's a number of factors involved in that. It's not just to help people feel about the library. I think between COVID and the next stage of us being closed and trying to deal with stuff, um, I think a lot of people had to find alternative ways to get their reading material. Connectivity increased. Increased exponentially, so. yes, it did. And I think that made a big difference too. It made a big difference in um, our computer usage. We don't have as many people that don't have computers at home, so they're coming in and using it. Um, I think a lot of people are using a lot more digital to, to sure. read, and even magazines. I think they're getting a lot more of their magazines and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if we're going to get back to that or not. I, and I tend, when I'm thinking about it and worrying about it, I tend to put it on the back burner like, okay, once we get through all of this stuff and kind of catch up, then that'll be, what are we going to do to basically remarket ourselves yeah. at that point? If it's a, I mean, almost to speak of like Wi-Fi lounge sort of thing, you know, is that an Which we do, sort of and we have a lot of people that come in and use it that way, yeah. Easy with their laptops. In fact, that's more than our computer usage. Yeah. The amount of people that are coming in with their laptops wanting a space to sit and just do that is yeah. also has increased greatly. Yeah. But in terms of kids and programs and traffic that way, we're, we're doing really good and really solid still. Lots and lots of kids. Has the speed been slowed down due to the Wi-Fi access? Have you noticed that? For people that's basically utilizing it, basically affects the speed of the um, lighting system. No, the last time we recontracted, they actually upped our, yeah. whatever right. they're called, the amount of information flow you can have per, they upped that last time. Yeah, you just yeah. put a nice new server in, right? Yes, a and that made it, yeah, there, yeah. So. The, the, the only, complaint I have about the speed is those computers that are out there, they, they've been right. replaced for a while. They can't keep up with the server. They're probably. slow. They're, they're yeah. old and they're slow. Yeah. yeah. So every once in a while I get somebody, especially somebody who comes in every single day and uses it and says, ah, oh, this computer. Yeah. yeah, but it's like. So that's, and that's definitely, it's been on the table for the last year as far as, yes, this is something we need to do. And we do have the funds to replace those computers. Yeah. Which so is, we, have a, we have an idea of where we want to get but those other computers? The new ones? If we get well, no, 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 if we get the new ones, where are the old ones going to go? No, I'm Sorry, looking right. for what can we do with them. I don't know, I, I, because they're equipment that the library bought, um, but our IT guy is telling me that that software that's in there is only going to be supported until, I believe it's October of 2025. Mm. So there's a window as far as right. anybody being interested in having them, and I'm not even sure. I hate to think of just dumping them, but but they are, according to IT stuff, old and outdated. They're valuable as trace minerals now. Right. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Interesting. You know, the old towers we still have. I've had people approach me and say, "If you ever get rid of those, I'd like to have one to kind of fiddle around with." They have some sort of because of the way they were put together. There's there's an intrinsic value in breaking them down or parts or. Yeah. Even utilize them. A bunch of gold. So no, that's definitely something that needs to be addressed. What to do with the old ones? Yeah. Yeah. 
Can they be given to some school like the high school for them to work on? Or are they too Possibly. old? Possibly. Or they, where they can sit there and let them take it home, you know, check it out, where they can take it home. No, most, kid, like, most kids, that, most people that would take them home, when, I mean, you know, you can get a tablet or they're all going to be under the Moye Bridge. Okay. <laughs> 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 I guarantee they're not fast enough for the kids. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, definitely. Right. <clears throat> oh, they have their phones. Just, yeah. just even me, just having to sit there and deal with big files and stuff. I was like, oh, you my cars. You know, I bet you already been in the IT guys' ears. Okay. Do you have anything else ready for Lynn? Okay. <clears throat> I have a question. In the letter or the email that was sent to Lynn, there was a um, paragraph in there that I didn't think was very nice. It had to do with the attorney, our attorney that they were concerned that our attorney would not understand. Where is this? Mm, I think it's um, uh, it's not in the packets. It's, oh. it's, from, it's from ICFL, one of those emails from ICFL. Because, because I reached out to them saying, okay, this has happened in terms of the law. Um, what kind of advice or, or basically guidance do you have? And that's where we has the, their basic thing is, be aware that minors have rights too, and if you go too far in the opposite direction, you can be subject to getting sued on behalf of minors and, and right. not following through on their rights. That's basically what that says and what they're talking about, Wendy. Okay. And that's ICFL's stance on it right now. That, that's their main concern. Every time I reach out to them, they come back with that, and also be sure you have good reconsideration policies in place. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. At least they're not doing like I grant and just saying don't call us. Yeah, don't call us. Okay. Oh, we won't call you. Right? Okay, well, we're on for review of the April financials. Um, we're 58% of the way through our budget year, and uh, our costs were 48%, so we're definitely within budget in total. Uh, really, I guess the only item that's a little high than what we projected originally is, is a janitorial. Yeah. <clears throat> so, anybody got any comments on the financials? That's the same service, Jim, so gender service that we're doing. No. Okay. Um, and that's part of the reason why it's a little bit high is because um, when Sandy became interim director, she hired a couple of young ladies to clean for us, and they quit, and they got a couple of other young ladies to clean for us, and they quit. Yeah. And um, that second <coughs> round of young ladies that really fell off, it yeah. was not great. So in essence, at that point, what I looked at and and tried to make a decision about was, first of all, we were only having them come in once a week. We had two girls coming in once a week and it just wasn't cutting it. So part of the reason that's higher is because when I put it out there like I need somebody new, I, I raised the rates. But I also raised and I need somebody twice a week. Okay. So that's why that's higher. Okay. Is it still like an individual or do you get more service? Thing? Nope, no, it's an individual. Okay. Yeah. And she's doing, I'm telling you, I can tell the difference. Yeah, and she's doing it twice a week, and that place is always clean. It okay. looks so much better. Well, that means if it's doing it twice a week, it explains it's, it's a little bit higher. Safety, which is why. Yeah. It's also reflective of um, standard wages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. There's, there's, yeah. I did call a couple of different girls that clean professionally, like that's what they do for a living. And what we were offering to that first couple of groups was very low. So that's yeah. another reason why I raised it. That's why they left. That's why they left. Yeah. way at the bottom of their priorities, yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Any board member got anything else on financials? Okay. I guess we're ready for adjournment. I'm looking for adjournment.